Sarah here with the paper cut. Um, we are doing our Halloween craft along today. So we are using this kit if you pre-ordered it. Okay. Um, so that is our finger card. So we have our finger card that we're going to be making. And we're actually going to start with this one. And we're going to do this one first. And then we will be doing our pop-out insert card, which is with the witch legs. So if you can pull out your kit that has these pieces in it, and we're going to drop the camera down. Okay, so in our finger card, we have this really long piece of paper. It's about 17 inches long. And it has scores on it. And three scores form our step. Um, so this is our card front, our card back, our inside, our step, and this is also our inside too. So to fold our card, we're going to turn it with our bumps up, so you will be able to feel your bumps. Okay, so feel your bumps. Then you are going to fold it in half, so just fold it in half. And then on this first score right here, you're going to do a valley fold. So by valley fold, I'm meaning this fold right here. So you're going to fold back to make your valley fold. Then you have your next score, and you're going to fold as a mountain fold. So our first one was a valley. Our next one is a mountain. And then we're going to fold back again as our valley. So we're kind of making this W. And then once that's folded, you've got one more score and we're just going to fold that one over. So then if we turn it over, we have our card front and then the inside we have our steps. Okay, so that will be your card. I'm going to have you open it up again. So open it all the way up. And now I'm going to put my little gluing demo here. Um, so you are going to put tape which yours will be folded. Um, yours will have folds right here. So no tape goes right here. You never want to put tape right there where the pink is. You're first going to put tape around this inside panel, noting that there's a score right here. So keep your tape just around right here. And I'm going to do it with you, but a little bit further back. And you don't have to put that much tape on if you don't like to tape that much. So I did put tape just around this panel right here. And then I'm going to take my card and I'm going to fold it in half, just like we did to begin with. So fold it in half. Now if we're going a little bit fast for you, um, you can always watch this later. Or if you have questions, feel free to ask questions. Um, and if it's questions about how to do stuff, We'll answer those if it's questions about products or product links, then we will answer those later on after the video. Um, <clears throat> so now, you guys had already folded yours, so I'm going to just fold back on mine. Again, this first one was a valley fold, and then the next one was, you're going to fold, mountain fold, and then a valley fold. So this is what we did the exact first time, except now our little panel is attached. Now we're gonna now we're seeing this panel. So let me go ahead and fold this. So we did our valley, our mountain, and our valley. So this is what you're looking at. You're gonna do tape right here. So just tape around on that panel. And then you're just going to fold your card in half. And that's going to attach the back of the card to where we have our tape. So go ahead and put tape right here on that panel. So this is our finger card. And this is like one of our very first die cut cards. So it's fairly old. I just thought I would do it with you again because it's probably been lots of years. So I have tape right here, and we're just going to fold our card in half. Now, if you want to, you can kind of pay attention.
how it lines up, but it should line up fairly accurately, especially if you folded it on the scores. So let me go ahead and do mine. So again, I have tape right here, and I'm just going to fold my card in half, and that makes our step on the inside. Now, for attaching our pieces, you could have stamped on this, and if I was going to stamp on here, I would have done it while it was still flat. But you guys didn't have stamps, so I just sent you printed pieces, and you're just going to attach these on the inside. Now, it is slightly different than my um, picture in the sample. On my picture, I go all the way to the ends. Um, but I just made layers that have a little bit white border on the inside for you. So on the picture that you see on your instructions, it shows them all the way to the ends. So you're just going to attach those two layers inside there. Now the normal kit does come with white fingers, and it comes with four white fingers. Um, I sent you some black pieces, and they are longer. So you're going to attach one black piece on either side of the step. And then you have two more pieces, and you're going to cut those in half for your fingers. Now on mine, I only used three. So, and you can make your fingers as long or as short as you want. So let me go ahead and cut one in half, or approximately in half. So if you cut them in half, your fingers are going to be a little bit longer than probably what they were on my sample. So it's up to you. You can leave them nice and long, or you can cut them a little bit shorter like I have on my sample. Um, but you do you, whatever you want to do. So you're going to attach your fingers. You attach them to opposite sides. Now my pieces I didn't tape down, but you attach them to opposite sides. When I do attach, I'm going to attach some of these <clears throat> just so I can show you. But when I do attach my fingers, I kind of do it in a folded position so I don't attach um, so I don't attach past the score line. So if you have it kind of folded up like that, then you don't have to worry about going past your score. Because if you do go past your score, then it will kind of um, buckle inside there. Again, hard to do upside down. <clears throat> so my first one's a little crooked. And see, I attached it a little bit past the score. So hang on, let me get it nice and folded at an angle that I can actually attach nicely. OK, there we go. Now, when you attach your fingers, you're only going to put a little bit of tape on one end of the finger. So, only put tape on one end of your finger. You don't want it going past about there, because if you have more tape on there, it's going to tape your card shut. So you attach one on one side, and if I had tape going behind here, I would tape my card shut. And then on my other one, you want to be careful to attach it on the other end. So now I'm going to attach it on the opposite end and attach it on the other side. So my fingers are going opposite directions. Now I gave you three monsters for the inside and one for the front. So I only used three out of my four fingers. Um, and it's up to you. If you want to, if you have another Halloween thing and you want to put a four fingers in there, you go for it. Um, anyways, then you're just going to attach your monsters to your fingers. Again, don't get any tape on the back of your monsters that's hanging off because again, you'll tape it shut. Um, for your, if you, um, if you've got it haunted, I did color my words green. And then I did do some brush blending around it. Or you could use a sponge with some purple ink. You've got your googly eyes in there. And then on the front, I used my googly eyes. I also popped up. This is our black glossy paper. So, And then I layered it. So you're just going to keep going along with that and finishing that. 
I am going to go on to the next card, okay, um, just so I can demo using our pop-out insert. Um, but anyways, this is the finger card. Um, we have them on our website. They are on the sale page, and the package does look like that, and we have them in white and cream, okay. So this is a five-count finger card kit. Um, we also do have a 25-count finger card kit that um, does not come with the envelopes. This one does come with the envelopes and the directions. So I don't think we had any questions, so I'm hoping you all got it all put together good. And these are pre-scored. Okay, so the paper is actually um, twice of an eight, five and a half by eight and a half, or five and a half by eight and a half, and then it's double the length, so it's actually 17 inches long, and it comes with all the scores on it, and then it comes with your fingers also. So go ahead and keep putting that card together. Um, they are on sale on our sale page, and I'm just going to get my other one, which is actually using our. Um, pop simple pop out card making die okay and then I'm going to show you how to make the gift stack so now you're going to get all of these pieces out and I'm just going to demo for a little bit so you don't have to start doing anything with me right away um, so the little pop out dies it comes in three sizes so you can make a different size pop out on the inside of your card and hang on let me grab just a different piece of cardstock um, so I start with a score and a scored card and you can cut it a little bit smaller so the piece that I gave you is a little bit smaller so then you have a border on the inside but to make the pop-out, you start with a scored card, and you can trim that if you want to. On the pop-out dies, there's these little points. These little points right here, and they have the little slit in them. So that little slit, you line up with your die. So you line up your die right on your score, and you hold it in place. Then you run it through your machine. I'm using the crossover two machine. And we do have these nice heavy duty metal plates. I think I showed you this metal plate um, on the very first live I did on the OOAK page. And I said that I could get them. It took me a while, but I finally have them. Um, so anyways, it cuts your slits in order to make your pop out. Oh, we have a question. People are wondering what the yellow triangle is. Oh, these <laughs> little yellow triangles here. Um, they keep my paper angled up so the, the light is, you know, is better on them and it doesn't wash it out. These are actually little paint things um, for painting like cabinet doors and stuff so you don't have them set on the table. And my daughter was painting here so I stole some of her little yellow triangles so it could angle up my paper so you guys could see it better. <laughs> So anyways, um, so when I ran that through and I just used the medium size, I have my score and then I have my slits. Now you can take a stylus and attach my slits here so I could score right there. I don't usually do that, but so I fold it in on the main score and then I'm actually going to pull up. So this is our valley fold, but I'm going to pull my pop out into a mountain fold. And then you can just kind of gently, you know, crease it at the end of those slits. And that makes my pop out for the inside of a card. Now we've got three different sizes here. So we've got three different sizes and you can kind of put them all together to make a gift stack, which I'm going to show you in just a little bit. But this is what I did for our um, Halloween witch card. So, and I just used the middle size, but you don't have to use them in the middle. You could do them off to the side, depending on what you have. You could use one of the little tiny ones. You could use the bigger one. Um, I just happen to use the middle size one. So that's how you use that set of dies. Um, so if we get to oh, another Can question. Can you talk about the metal plate oh, again? The metal plate. So this, it's a stainless steel metal plate, so it will not 
bend. Sometimes when you get um, the thin metal plates, they get kind of bendy. Like as you use them, they get little ripples and stuff in them. And um, my son does sheet metal. And so I asked him, can you make me a thick plate that's not going to bend? And he said, sure. So he did it. And with the crossover two machine, it has this little knob right here so you can raise it up and down. So it works really nice with the crossover. You don't have to shim. Also, my big plate stays really flat. Um, but then I asked him if he could make me one for the um, big shot. So the thickness of this plate is the thickness of the clear plates for the big shot. Um, so you could use it with your big shot too. So, but I always say test stuff. These weren't developed by, you know, the die cutting machine manufacturers. I just made it because it was really handy for me. And then people saw it and they're like, oh, I want one of those because I'm sick of a metal plate that keeps getting all ripply. So, you know, I do have these plates both in this big size and in the smaller size. Now these are super heavy, so you don't want to drop these on your toe because you actually might hurt yourself. So, so anyways, but it does stay really flat. Um, now I can't guarantee this, this plate is a little thicker than your big shot plate, so I don't know if that's why this one stays flat. Um, I, your big shot clear plate still may bend depending on the pressure that you have going through it. So anyways, we do have the metal plates on our website. If you just search metal, M-E-T-A-L, you'll come up with the two sizes of metal plates. So I think we have another question. Yeah, they said, do you have one that can be used in a Gemini? I do not have a Gemini machine, so I'm not sure. I know people have bought the metal plates, so if there's anybody out there that has a Gemini and has used the metal plate with it, but I'm really not familiar with a Gemini. So if it works just like the Big Shot and you use the same plates that go through the Big Shot, I would imagine it would work. But like I said, I'm not familiar with a Gemini. Sorry, I don't have a good answer to that one. So if you pull out your kit, we're going to start with this piece. Now, I already pre-did it for you. So I took it and I have it printed on one side. And this is just what is done. It's got scores and then it's got your slits. Okay. So you're going to fold it in. So the bump is up and we're folding it in. Actually, you're going to fold it the other way. Fold it out. So you're, this is the inside. So you're folding it in. And then you're just going to take your slit and you're going to pop that in. Just kind of take your finger and like I said, just gently kind of connect your little slits there with a fold. And you could have, like from the back, taken a ruler and a stylus and actually scored that if you wanted to. But I just kind of take my finger and I just kind of gently bend it to connect those two slits on both the top and the bottom and then fold that in. So that's the inside of our card. <clears throat> then we have our A2 scored card. The bump is on the inside and with this folded flat I'm just going to put tape all the way around one side. Now you could put tape right here if you wanted to. I don't know if it's necessary or not. Um, and I'm just going to line, and here I forgot to draw my lines on here for you. My markers left the lid off so it's going a little dry. And I've just got the folded edge and I'm going to line that up with the score of my card. Sometimes it's easier if you actually fold your card because then you're lining it up right in that fold. Where if you have it flat, you might go over that score a tiny bit. So if you actually have it folded and your taped side down, it doesn't matter, doesn't matter which side because you don't, haven't determined your front or back yet. You're just going to set that in there and attach it. Then you're going to put tape on this side and either fold your card flat or you can kind of just bring that right up. So I'm going to put tape right here. And now I should be able to fold my card flat 
or just bring our other panel up. And then we have our pop out. Now you kind of have to pay attention to which side because you have words on there. So you know that this is the front of your card. So just pay attention to what you're making the front of your card um, because we have our words up here. So then on the inside, let me find our witch. On the inside, you're going to attach your um, witch legs. Now, my dad was putting these together. And so I apologize if somebody has two left feet or two right feet. Um, but if you do, I can always send you replacements and if you're missing something. Now I did not end up putting the little witch hats in there. Um, so those aren't in there, so just ignore that that's even right there. Um, but when you're attaching your legs, only put tape on the part that is actually sticking to your pop-up piece. If you put tape all the way up on your legs, you're gonna, again, tape your card shut. Um, so only put tape on the bottom of the legs and attach those to your little pop-up piece right here. Um, then you're gonna put the shoes on. Again, if you're missing a piece, let us know. Um, I did pop up the Witching You a Happy Halloween right here. And then on the front, you might have a different witch. There's all different witches. There's flying witches, there's running witches. There was six different witches. So you might have a different witch. So you're just gonna have to deal with that one if it's not exactly like that one. <laughs> but she, I'm sure she's cute too. Um, the trick or treat when you're attaching that on there, this is on the black glossy cardstock, which the witch legs are also black glossy. And I think we did the witch as black glossy also. So be careful when you're attaching this trick or treat because if you put too much glue on there, you'll get it on the front of the black glossy and it just kind of smudges, it doesn't come off very well. So just be careful only to put a small amount of glue behind your trick or treat. Um, and then you have your purple Miri Lava that I ran through an embossing folder. Okay, so that's our witch card. Now I just wanna show you um, the gift stack so we're gonna run this through actually three times. And I'm just gonna go back to our one that I did. So I'm gonna take the smaller one and I'm gonna put it fairly close. Oops, I need a piece of removable tape. I'm gonna put it right on my score. So now you're probably still just putting your witch together, which is fine. I'm just gonna talk, um, but I'm using the smaller one and then I'm also gonna use the bigger one and put those fairly close. And again, line it up on your score. I think I only have 25 minutes. I think we're supposed to go 25 minutes. So that gives you guys time in between. So, oh, another question. While you're putting that, people are wondering if the metal plate can work on a wizard or a cuddle bug. Um, cuddle bug, I don't think so because I think the cuddle bug plate is five and three quarters and the plate I think is six inches. So cuddle bug, I would say no. The other machine, again, I'm not familiar with that machine. So not sure. Anyways, so here we used all three of our um, sizes and we're just going to pop those out. And this can form a gift stack. So you, it'll actually be like a stack of presents. And this one, so this you would attach onto the inside of a card and it, it's a stack of gifts. So this one is this, <clears throat> makes this card right here. Um, and this one comes pre-cut. So this is one of our show specials with a $50 product purchase excluding class kits. You can type in either free insert and get this gift stack insert, or you can type in free finger and get the package of finger cards. So it's either free insert or free finger for the show special. So I just wanna show you really quick before we end here, our next craft along that is coming up on August 15th on this page. We're doing this triple tier slider card. 
So these we have pre-cut and we'll make that one. And then we also have our new slimline cards and slimline overlays. Um, so these two cards are the next craft along from August 15th. We also have some classes on our class page right now. We have a Christmas card class and a slimline card class. So just really quick, I'm gonna show you those and then I'm gonna be done for the day. So these are two of our two of our cards in our slimline class, along with two more cards in our slimline class. And there's another card, I just don't know where that sample is right now. Um, and then in our Christmas card class, which we will be having Christmas card kits. Um, so there's these two cards that are in our Christmas card class. And then these two cards are in our Christmas card class. And again, my fifth card, not sure where it's at. So anyways, go to our class page and those class kits are available right now. Um, but we'll see you, if you don't, I don't see you in a class, I will see you on August 15th on this page for a craft along. Thanks much.